The White House is now considering how robots can help fight Ebola. Meeting this crisis is going to require that we draw on each other's collective experience. Three types of robots that can play a role in combating the virus. Now on the New York Times Minute. Can you have her sit up? You want to sit up? Telepresence robots, seen here in a promotional video from a company called In Touch, could potentially be used in the field. The devices, which allow doctors and other experts to consult remotely, could help with community outreach and aid in diagnosis. In the past, U.S. doctors have used telepresence to consult with patients suffering from a simple cold to a stroke. Open your eyes real wide. The limitation is that telepresence machines don't yet have the dexterity of humans. A doctor can only watch. For now, at least, some medical professionals, be it a doctor or a nurse, will be directly exposed to Ebola. There are also germ-zapping robots. This is Gigi. The robot resembles R2-D2 and has the ability to help decontaminate a room by blasting ultraviolet light. After Thomas Eric Duncan died, Gigi was used in his treatment area in Dallas. It's the machine's cost, $104,000 a piece, that may be its limiting factor. Sensor calibration complete. Finally, there are humanoid robots. We've seen prototypes compete at DARPA's Robotics Challenge and the potential does exist for them to be used in the field, but they just don't yet have the dexterity to replace a nurse or doctor. Administration officials are helping to organize an upcoming nationwide set of workshops that they hope will spur more ideas for how robots can help. Meeting a public health challenge like this isn't just a job for government. 